To finish our story about John Hawkwood, I think I will cover the Battle of Castagnaro more closely. The Battle of Castagnaro was fought on 11th of March 1387 at Castagnaro, today's Veneto, Northern Italy, between Verona and Padua. It is one of the most famous battles in the Italian Condottieri age. Up until 19th century, on the territory of modern Italy, existed numerous of different small states. Due to concentration on trade, they were rich, but as I said, they were small, they couldn't gather large troops. So most of the times, they preferred to hire troops instead of using their own, or at least use both. A group of such soldiers for hire would sign a condotta, a contract, stipulating terms of service, pay and other niceties of their employment. The person making the contract, usually the commanding officer, was known as condottiere. The contracted soldier. There were also other clauses in the contract, such as stipulation against hiring on a rival power after a certain period of time. There were even clauses relating to giving great period of condottiere once his term of air service expired, allowing his former employer time to decide whether to rehire the cell swords. In winter 1385-1386, war broke out between Padua and Verona. As you can guess, both armies consisted of native army men and mercenaries. The army of Verona was led by Giovanni Odelafi and Astaga II de Polenta, while Padians were commanded by John Hawkus, Giovanni Acuto, and Francesca Novella de Carrara, the son of Francesca I, Lord of Padua. Padoan soldiers besieged the city of Verona, however Padoan's army was not adequate to take the city, and its lines of communication and supplies were constantly endangered. Father, after ordering his cavalry to make widespread raids of local farms and other targets, Hawkwood received scouting reports of large numbers of revealing Veronese forces intent to wipe out his command. Early in March, Hawkwood ordered his force to raise the siege and fell back about 30 miles toward to his supply base in the town of Castelbaldo on the east bank of the Adige river. As Hawkwood approached his base of Castelbaldo, he sent a message to his quartermaster there to place needed supplies on wagons on the Adige river and rendezvous with Padian forces at the town of Scantagnaro. He also sent scouting parties to find out a worthy spot for his force to offer battle to the pursuing Veronese. John Hawkwood brought 1100 of his own condottieri, about 5-600 cavalry and 5-600 archers, to supplement the pardon forces of 8000 men. The Veronese was the army of between 11,000 and 6000 men. The vast majority of his soldiers were mountain men-at-arms, with a contingent of Veronese militia to recently recruit levies of pikemen and spearmen. How could scouts find an almost perfect spot for his army? The town of Castagnaro was located on the west bank of Adige river. To the north of the town was a large irrigation ditch that offered an excellent defensive position. To the west was a large area of marshy ground that offered protection for his left flank. On his right was Adige river, as well as the Aleo canal running southwards. Finally, the area was honeycombed with dikes of guard, the local towns and the farmland from flooding. The Hawkwood offered the majority of his knights and men at arms to dismount to fight with the party and footmen then organized them in two lines of infantry with right and left flanks, and the center placed astride to the road of Castagnaro, which ran northwestward and crossed the irrigation ditch. The line of substantial dug, which paralleled the south side of the ditch. Hawkwoods placed his cannon and force of 600 crossbowmen to guard the right flank. Just behind his second line of men, he placed his personal bodyguard of 500-600 knights and his units of 500-600 mounted English archers. Just behind him, Hawkwood placed a Padian Carazzo. This war card was pride of the most medieval Italian city-states armies. It was a large platform with portable altar, where the city's priests sang and prayed for the success of the military. It was also had number of trumpets to give signals during the battle and usually carried the city's flag. 
If this war card fell into enemy hands, it was considered a severe check to the city's honor. It was usually guarded by the army's best troops. In a bit of subterfuge, Hawk was had a copy of White Company's banner made, and it was displayed prominently with Carozzo. He moved his English mounted units fairly close to the back of his army's second line, allowing his mounted units to be screened. The pursuing Veronese were brought up shortly in their pursuit when they saw the Padian force lined up for the battle on the morning of March 11, 1387, causing a great deal of confusion and consternation. Ordalafi arranged his footmen in two lines. The first line seems to have been one long division without left, right or center divisions. The second line was slightly more organized, but they arrayed in several small units of infantrymen, mostly armed with pikes and spears. In the rear of a main Veronese battle line were two mounted units, probably knights and mounted men at arms from Andalafi's own condottieri band along with a large contingent of newly recruited Veronese militiamen guarding the Veronese war card. Finally, about noontime, the first line of a Veronese army moved forward to the attack. The Veronese footmen had to first cross the irrigation ditch and then struggle up a steep duke to attack the enemy. To make matters worse, recent heavy rain had left the ground very soft and May footing very treacherous. There was a single ford across the ditch, where the road from the town of Castagnaro ran north to south. It was, however, held quite surely by Padan infantry, with a living of condottieri dismounted men at arms. In addition, attacks on the Padan flank were the target of crossbow and artillery fire. As the afternoon advanced, the Veronese attacks were supplemented with an infusion of reinforcements from the second line. However, these reinforcements did not add much to the Veronese offensive punch. While these attacks were making place, Veronese commander Ordalafi ordered his men to throw fascines, which are bundles of brushwood or other materials, to allow his soldiers a sure footing to cross the irrigation ditch. In the late afternoon, the Veronese soldiers completed their work deposing hundreds of fascines into the irrigation ditch providing somewhat better footing for a frontal assault on the Padian defenders. When told of a Veronese activity, John Hawkwood decided the time for action had come. He ordered his English knights and bowmen to mount, and they began to wide swing across the rear and left flank of his forces, masked by the rest of Padian army. Crossing the canal and irrigation ditch, the English flanking forces temporarily hid behind one of the dukes along the western banks of the Edaji river. At about the same time that the English sellswords were in position, the Veronese launched their main attack, aimed at the center of Padon's army. Waiting until the Veronese were fully involved in the attack, Hogwood made his move. A signal, said by one historian to be a flaming arrow, the false white company's banner on the Padon Carazzo was dropped and Hawkwood ordered the real one on his forest raised. He gave the order to charge, and 1100 mounted Englishmen charged in the left flank and rear of Veronese army. Seeing the attack of their allies, the Padon right flank charged their enemy, followed shortly after the general advance of the rest of the army. Within minutes, the left side of a Veronese force had disintegrated. When word of a spectacular destruction of its left side reached the remainder of the force, nearly the entire Veronese army lost its nerve and made the additional tactical maneuver – retreat. Then, showing the discipline for which they were renowned, Hawkwood and his white company reformed and attacked the Veronese cavalry reserve. The greater part consisted of rival condottieri. After a short and brutal melee, the Padon horsemen followed his comrades, retreating in a great haste back to their home territory. The English horsemen set their sights on the only remaining units of Veronese army still standing, a unit of militiamen and new recruits. Surprisingly, these men acquitted themselves fairly well, stopping the White Company on its tracks. However, the great experience and heavy armor and weapon and self swords began to tell and eventually the Veronese militiamen followed their comrades. 
By the sundown, the Battle of Castagnara was finished. The Veronese sustained between 4,000 and 7,000 casualties, at least 800 killed, 700 wounded and, and an estimated 4,000 taken prisoner. Among the prisoners were warlord Giovanni on the Lafi of Fiori and his second-in-command Astasio de Palenta. Pardon casualties were almost certainly in the light category. The battle is considered by many medieval historians as John Hawkwood's greatest victory. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.